You worked at a big company yep. for a long time. What do you really mean by imagine it forward? Yeah, I mean, we need to think ahead. We need creative problem solvers. I mean, look at what's happening here in Silicon Valley. You could argue that maybe we need a few more people who can sort of think about the unintended consequences of some of our technology. Within established organizations, it can be so hard to harness the power of change. You yeah. know, how can big companies as big as GE be nimble? in this new age of technology? Yeah, well, I, I found most big companies want to be nimble, but then taking the action to do it, it's another thing. I think you really do need to create almost two, two tracks in a company. You need your core established, kind of optimized today business, and you need the people who are creating the future. And they're different kinds of people with different measurements, different funding requirements, and it's, it, it takes a longer amount of time. So how do the people who are creating the future convince the people in the first track to do things differently? Well, sometimes that's why you need separate tracks often, mm -hmm. Because you, you, they need to come together for certain key things clearly, um, and you need to set joint goals, align them around common metrics. But I think also you need these kind of rebel pirates, these people who come in, even in big companies, and kind of try to disrupt what's happening. And that is very, um, that creates a lot of tension in the early stages. Now, look, it's not necessarily apples to apples, but do you think it's possible for the GEs of the world to compete with the Amazons and Apples and Facebooks and Googles today? Like, or is it too late? Well, I think it's something we ought to think about. I think, um, I look at a company like GE, where I worked for so long, a 125-year-old company. It doesn't get to be that old without knowing a thing or two about change. So I think there's a lot we can look at, at sustainability in these companies. But yeah, the stakes are always higher as you get new companies disrupting. But I wonder, as investors, as people who follow, you know, we, we, we watch Amazon, they're getting bigger, more complex, the stakes are higher, the ability to take risks. So um, is maybe the question, can these guys continue to compete and be as fast and nimble as we've known them early? So that is actually my exact next question. You know, now that Amazon and Apple and Facebook and Google, they are so yeah. big, it's hard to imagine them not being so dominant. Yeah. But do you see that in the future? Could they, you know, fall from the throne? Essentially? I, I think you have to assume that that is an eventuality. Hopefully they're thinking about it. Hopefully in Amazon today, in Netflix, pick your company. There are people sitting there going, are we still willing to take the same kind of risk? Can we? We're a public traded company. There are different expectations. I do think, especially founder-led companies tend to get a bit more of a, a bit more of an acceptance. Um, but I also think you can, back to your other question, look at these traditional companies who done reinvention, what big companies do well is culture. Mm -hmm. um, you look at some of the challenges, take a Tesla just down, down <laughs> the way, I mean, culture is a, a challenge. And I think these companies can learn a lot from some of the established companies that have had to figure out adaptation, get their culture to move. Um, so I think that the, the scale-up companies, these newer tech companies can learn a lot from some of the incumbents. Do you think some of these, which of these new big tech companies do you think is the most disruptable? Dis well, I th I'd say they're all disruptable. I think that the ones who sit and think we're not disruptable are the ones you'd start, you'd start worrying about. They all have a head start, right? They all have been out there. I mean, I was in the digital media world when we saw Netflix just as a little tiny, you know, whisper. Uh, we started at NBC, we were, it was part of the team that helped seed Hulu. We knew that was coming. We didn't know how it was going to get there. Now you look at it 10, 12 years later. Um, but it, the same forces that are going to happen to Netflix. So I, I really feel like everybody needs to keep imagining forward new scenarios and new alternatives. Now, your book also gets very personal, and it's so rare to hear sort of personal lessons from, you know, somebody who's had the journey yeah. that you have. You were GE's first female vice chair. You know, why did you leave? I left because there was a management change. Um, John Flannery came in, Jeff Immelt left. Uh, John Flannery came in, new leader, wants a new team. Um, and I think that's what happens often. So um, it was a bit earlier than I expected to leave, but yeah, new, new team, new guy, new team. What are the challenges we need to know more about in terms of getting more women into the top, top positions? Like where you were. I mean, there are so few people who make it to the level of Beth Comstock, though, you know, so many who should and yeah, could. Yeah, so many who should. Um, you know, what don't they know? Well, I think partly we just need to embrace more difference. We're, we hire people like us. I mean, it's, it's a human trait we have to overcome. I mean, you know it from the work you've done. Um, people have all kinds of excuses why they don't want to hire people who are different. I think women, for a number of reasons, most companies have a good track record of hiring women at undergraduate level and then lose women as, as they progress in their career. So we need to address that issue. It's complex. Uh, they, we need to have programs that allow women different ways to enter, come back in and out of the workforce. And, and 
and those are happening, but it's too slow. But at the end of the day, we just need to make way for more women. We need to have a pipeline, mm -hmm. uh, and that takes time. You need to take your time out there finding the future women leaders of your company. You have a killer line in my book where you challenge a male venture capitalist who ha had said, we're looking very hard for women, but we're not prepared to lower our standards. And you said, well, who created the standards and you can't find any women who qualify? That's absurd. Yeah. What do you think are the, re what are some of the real reasons behind the scenes that more women aren't getting hired, that more minorities aren't getting hired? Because, you know, we're half the population. Yeah. Well, people, one, they don't want to take a risk on something different. It's not proven. There's just this belief that if they haven't had the same path as us, gone going to the same school, had the same kind of job, they can't clearly be as capable at this job. You document that well. I love the whole discussion of meritocracy and even the false promise of meritocracy. Who's setting the merits? And so I'd like to believe many people are well-meaning in that, but they aren't maybe thinking through enough and exposing themselves and challenging their thinking to say, is this really true? Am I doing enough to challenge that belief? Um, and so I think, I think we just let it pass. People are not taking enough risks to hire people who are different, disruptive, and uh, potentially going to build a brighter new future. They, it's the risk, I think, at the end of the day. We don't use the word visionary and genius to describe women, and yet we use that word to describe yeah. dozens and dozens and dozens of men. How fast do you see change happening? Though people always ask me, like, how optimistic are you? Yeah. And I'm like, I couldn't be doing this if I yeah. wasn't optimistic. But you know, you've you've been there in the trenches, behind the scenes. How fast? Are we really going to see the numbers shift? Well, I'm optimistic to feel there's a lot of energy. I think there are a lot of people saying we've got to make a change. We have to. I wish it were faster. And frankly, for having worked a whole career now, 25 plus years, um, I wish there had been more change. It's disappointing. It's frustrating. I see it for my daughters, for young women coming up that like some of this should have changed by now. You mean the salary issues are still what they are? You mean you're still having to work, you know, much harder, prove things much in a much harder way? That how is that possible? What's next for you? I'm off doing my book tour, so that's a big thing. And I'm going to re-enter work in a very different way. Not sure I'm excited to sort of get out and discover, and who knows? I'm going to, but I'm, it's going to be a very different path for me. Do you think GE can get back to greatness? Uh, I think GE is great. I, uh, I worked there for 25 plus years. It's a really great company that makes stuff the world needs. It's in a bad place with the stock market right now. It's got some complex issues that they have to work through. I think people underestimated the complexity of GE uh, internally and externally, and it's not an easy fix.